This is about the end of the UPS2 inverter project, and it's time to test whether, after all of these changes, this really can be used as a continuous duty inverter at 1500 watts as planned. So, this is uh, basically how it looked before. Um, so, if I just take off the top, set that aside. Um, I made uh, a couple other changes here, uh, pretty minor stuff, but uh, Basically, I wanted to add some fan cooling to it, but I didn't want to modify that metal cover just yet because this may or may not work, or I may want to tweak it yet. So I just took this big sheet of cardboard, and uh, cardboard is kind of a worst case situation, also because it's a pretty good insulator, whereas the metal will will breathe better. And uh, I just cut a hole here, about the size of a fan, right over these FETs that I need to keep cool, and I have this. Uh, 12 watt, 115 volt AC fan, I'm just going to set right there. So that'll blow air into the unit right over the transistors, hopefully keeping those cool. And uh, um, that will also keep some of this wiring cool because I know that this wiring, um, getting 80 amps pushed through it continuously is going to get very warm. So hopefully all the airflow works out for that. Uh, and then there's these uh, cooling grates on the sides. I covered most of these up with electrical tape, trying to force the air to go over the transformer over here. Um, I left a little gap here so the FETs can get some cooling. Um, I taped up uh, the fan on the back and disconnected that. I won't be needing that fan now that this other one is on here. And most of the other holes in the unit, whatever holes are here where air could leak through that I don't want air to leak through, I taped a lot of those up. I left these holes open on this connector because the connector itself will probably get pretty warm. Um, some grating on this side. There's also grating behind this, which I left open because I want the air to flow onto these FETs across here over the transformer and then out of the unit. Put this cover back on. Alright, so to help that out a little bit in the front here, uh, with the metal, I plan to cut a notch out of it so that the air can escape out the top after it flows over the transformer a little bit. So I'm going to leave this open and just kind of offset this cover and uh, put the fan on it. And then just set some objects on top to kind of weight it down so that the air doesn't escape out the edges. And I'm just going to run it like this. I have a uh, thermocouple on those transistors, just like before, this meter right here. Uh, I just have it taped onto the heat sink, as you probably saw when I was showing inside the unit. That is the heat sink temperature right now. And I'm going to use this infrared thermometer on the transformer inside. I can just uh, lift this lip up and uh, check to the, the transformer temperature every once in a while and uh, just let it back down. Over here I have a meter that uh, I'm going to uh, measure the battery voltage with because I don't want to drain these batteries severely. Deep cycling batteries damages them. I know they say deep cycle on the front, but uh, believe me, they're not true deep cycle. And I don't want to cycle them too much past 50% because uh, it does damage them permanently if you do that too often. So I'm going to monitor that, make sure I don't go too far on that. and. Uh, for record keeping, I'm just going to record a few things here. Every two minutes is the plan. I record the battery voltage, the transistor temperature, and the temperature of the transformer. And we'll just see how this works out. Should give us a good idea of whether this UPS can handle being a, being a 1500 watt inverter or not. I'm a little concerned about some of the cabling inside, especially that uh, 10 gauge stuff going into the transformer. Um, if that stuff melts off, it could uh, short against things and cause a problem. This is cardboard, which is flammable. I'm just a little bit nervous about that. So if something goes wrong, I can just yank on, on these battery cables and disconnect them. But uh, if the cardboard's on fire, I have a fire extinguisher here, just to be safe. Just in case. I don't think that's going to happen, but I'm ready for it if it does. So. I will uh, start this test and uh, get back to you with the results. 
I did a little bit of math on these batteries and I should be able to run this test for about half an hour I, I expect before these batteries are dead so I'll probably run it for about 20 minutes um, and for the load I will use that uh, little electric heater that I used before this guy back here I'm just going to turn that on high this time which is 1500 watts approximately and uh, just let that thing burn uh, for 20 minutes or so depending how that battery bank does and uh, hopefully the uh, inverter holds together I'm not going to record this so if a spectacular failure happens you're going to miss it but I'll get back to you with the results well the test is complete and I have my test data here recorded every two minutes for one half hour both temperatures and voltage I'm happy to say that the unit survived the test it uh, output 1500 watts for half an hour straight without overheating or anything. I uh, looked inside here for any discoloring on the wires or any other signs that something had gotten too hot uh, that I wasn't measuring and there's no obvious signs of any issues. Um, and uh, these two batteries held up pretty well. I'm actually quite impressed with their performance. Um, these are group size 24 Autocraft batteries. There's probably many others that work just as well but I've tried Optimus in the past, and uh, I've always been very disappointed with those. Um, so these are less than half as expensive, and from my experience so far, perform better. But uh, the uh, only thing in here that I really noticed got especially hot were these cables. Um, this test was uh, about 80 amps, continuous, and these 8 gauge cables, the jacket temperature actually got up to about 70 degrees Celsius. So they are clearly not adequate, once again. Um, I'll have to upgrade those for the final design. But for this test, they uh, serve their purpose. Um, I did let it run for one half hour instead of my planned 20 minutes, uh, which is basically the extent that these batteries can do. They are pretty well fully discharged at that point. Uh, because the results were not as conclusive as I was hoping. Um, but uh, let me show you what, what I mean. Here are my test data plotted in a spreadsheet application. The first thing is, that I recorded is the battery voltage, and this is the voltage at the battery terminals of the battery bank. The first data point at zero minutes here is, at, uh, is under load, so there's no float or residual voltage um, recorded here at zero minutes. But uh, you can see that the, the curve drops off as you'd expect for uh, a lead acid battery being discharged. This last data point fell pretty rapidly compared to all of the rest, so that means that my batteries were very near 100% state of discharge. Um, I had planned to go 20 minutes to avoid that, but I went the full 30 minutes anyway. It's not good for the batteries, but it's good for the test. The transistor temperature was the other thing that I checked, and uh, you can see here that the temperature of the transistor is this line here is 45 degrees. I never, never really got all that warm. This one up here is 50 degrees Celsius. So the transistors increased in temperature up to about 10 minutes where they peaked at uh, 48 I think, 47 degrees, and then they started trailing off as the battery voltage fell, which uh, was kind of unexpected. The transistors are actually less stressed with a lower battery voltage, which kind of surprised me, even though the output stayed constant. But there are no problems whatsoever with the transistors. The transformer temperature, however, is uh, the disturbing part of it and the reason why I let the test go for 30 minutes. You can see that when the load was turned on there's a bit of a delay before the actual core of the transformer warms up and that's to be expected because the core loss <coughs> in the, uh, the core loss is the loss in the iron transformer itself, the la iron laminations. Um, that's relatively constant and what I'm actually increasing here in terms of losses is the loss in the copper windings. The copper is wound around that iron core, um, steel core in this case, and uh, it takes a while for the heat to get from that copper into the iron and conduct, conduct all the way through. So there's a lag of a few minutes before this curve starts, starts elevating. <clears throat> but unfortunately, it looks like this curve is almost a perfect straight line. Uh, I was hoping to get uh, a curve that looked something like this. I kind of leveled off after a while so I could at least extrapolate to see where it would stop rising in temperature. But in this case, it looks like it'll just continue going on for quite some time. 
before the uh, heat dissipation, the thermal dissipation, equals out the, uh, the heat generated, which is a couple hundred watts in that transformer under load. So I'm not quite sure what to do with this. Um, this is 30 minutes at uh, full load. Is it realistic to expect that it will run this way for a very long period of time? This is a 180 degrees Celsius transformer. This line up here is 85 Celsius. So I could have let this go for an hour if I had the battery capacity and it probably would have been just fine. But uh, if I let this go continuously, it looks like it's going to overheat eventually. So I'm going to have to somehow improve cooling to that transformer or reduce the uh, maximum load or uh, potentially limit how long this UPS, um, this inverter can be run at full load, um, either artificially or just by keeping track of it. So I'll have to think about that a little bit, but these are, these are the results that I got from that test. Okay, I'm back. It's actually been a couple of weeks since I've worked on this project. I've got, uh, got involved in a couple of other things and only now just got back to it. So where I left off last time, uh, I had just done some, uh, some testing on this, some load testing to see how it performed thermally, and I ran into a couple of problems. Uh, this transformer in here got, uh, got too warm. Uh, it looked like it was going to go into a thermal runaway condition before the temperature stabilized, so I had to think of uh, some ways that I could get around that. Um, and the second thing is that uh, I was only able to run this device for about uh, 30 minutes before my battery bank was completely dead. And it was a pretty sizable battery bank, too, so I need to figure out a way to uh, let this run longer than half an hour so that I can let temperature stabilize and make sure that it actually can run indefinitely with whatever load I choose to run on it. So for the first problem, the transformer overheating, I uh, thought a little bit about, uh, about what to do to keep that cooler. Um, and uh, I looked at how it's held into the unit and everything, how the air flows over and under it, and basically the only surfaces that can be cooled by airflow is this surface right over here and uh, maybe a little bit on the back if the air wraps around but the bottom there's no airflow and the top there's the uh, the metal cover that goes right over it and uh, you don't get any airflow on top either they put this little piece of rubber on here just to keep it from vibrating since this is is a transformer and it's magnetic and every time you get a load surge the the top plate will bounce so this just keeps it quieter. But uh, so my first thought was to grab some uh, some spacers here and just uh, space the transformer off the bottom by half an inch or so and that would uh, allow some airflow underneath and then I would take the top of the box instead of having it flat I would bump it up over the transformer allowing airflow to go over and under it hopefully keeping it cooler. So that was my uh, initial plan However, when I took this transformer out, I noticed that the bottom was just about flush with this metal case. And this is some pretty, pretty heavy gauge stuff here. Uh, so I actually got a different idea instead. Instead of using these spacers, as I was planning, I instead just took that uh, same silicon goop, uh, thermal compound, conductive uh, heat sink compound, the same stuff that I used on the transistors. <coughs> and uh, just smeared the whole bottom of the transformer with that stuff. Uh, it didn't take a whole lot of it really and uh, stuck the transformer down, smeared it around good on the bottom and screwed it down. And uh, my thought there is that it can now heat sink to the whole base of this and uh, this is all one piece of metal bent up around the edges so air blows through all of these holes and everything else blows around this whole case and uh, hopefully that will, uh, will allow it to heat sink on the bottom even though there's no airflow, I could put an external fan on it, external heat sinks if I chose to. And for the top portion, so it allows some uh, airflow over the top, there's really nothing to heat sink it to in this case. Um, I modified my little cardboard, temporary cardboard cover. This will be made out of the, uh, the top plate, the factory top uh, sheet metal plate eventually, but until I figure out how I want it, I'm just going to use this cardboard template. <clears throat> so I made this little uh, vent hood on it. So I put the fan here just like before and uh, I just took the cardboard and cut two slits in it and uh, bent this piece up, taped in a little piece of cardboard on both sides. 
Um, I designed it this way because this is fairly easy to make in metal. I can just cut two slots, bend it, and uh, fill it in with something. So I can actually do that without really any metal working skills because I have none. <clears throat> but uh, I think the, uh, the real one I would make uh, a little bit smaller than this, um, a little bit shorter than what this is. In any case, this should allow the air to go over the transformer and heat sinking to the bottom hopefully will allow every surface now to cool instead of just a couple of surfaces. And uh, that's the first problem. Hopefully this transformer will stabilize before it goes into thermal runaway. The uh, second issue is my uh, incoming power. Um, I need a way to power this thing for longer than my batteries can provide. I could go out and buy more batteries, but uh, instead I took uh, some 12 volt power supplies and uh, tied them together. So uh, I put a few in series, uh, that gives me 24 volts. I margined the power supplies up, uh, giving me 26 volts, which is enough to power this unit. And uh, um, well, basically, so my, my kludge together power supplies gives me uh, <clears throat> about 2000 watts, um, around 80 amps of, uh, of power from the wall this time. So. As long as the power company doesn't shut down my power, I'll be able to go indefinitely now. And uh, then I just uh, use these uh, vice grips to clamp the positive and negative cables to my, uh, my power supply leads here. And uh, just as a note, this is a very effective way to connect wires together temporarily. Of course, it makes the whole tool alive, but this is low voltage, so I don't care. Um, usually your connections are the, are the hottest part of your cable. In this case, they're the coolest. Not only is this a, a low resistance connection, it's also heat sink by a big steel tool, so it makes a very nice temporary connection and it doesn't damage your wires. You can just unclamp it when you're done and go about your business. So that's where I'm at right now. <clears throat> I uh, put my uh, thermocouple thermometer on here, just taped it to a spot where, uh, where it shouldn't get too much airflow because uh, I can't, I can no longer measure the top of this because there's airflow going over it. It won't accurately represent the temperature of the transformer anymore. But uh, anyway, that's uh, enough of that. Um, I'm not going to record the actual testing on this, but uh, I will be doing something similar. I'll probably record every five minutes this time instead of every two minutes and, uh, and see how it goes. I'll get back to you when, uh, when I have some results here.